Late in 2024, I made a video about Lithuania's goal of energy independence by 2050. I discussed the long journey the country has ahead of it if it wants to achieve that goal 25 years from now. A few people mentioned the large offshore wind farm project that's coming soon, something that I failed to mention in that video. So let's discuss it today. Well, right after the introduction. If you're looking for a tech job in Vilnius, check out today's sponsor, Sigli. There's more info at the end of this video. So, going by the name Koronian Nord, this offshore wind farm is set to be the largest energy project in Lithuania. According to the project's official website, it's estimated that the wind farm will have a capacity of 700 megawatts, with the ability to generate around 3 terawatt hours of green electricity per year, equivalent to 25% of Lithuania's current electricity demand. Not only is it Lithuania's largest energy project, but it will also make the country the first Baltic state to have an operating offshore wind farm. Now, Ignitus does say that it's working on developing two offshore wind farms in Estonia, with both maritime areas located in the Gulf of Riga, northwest of Brunu Island, near the Estonian coast. This project, however, is expected to start five years after the estimated completion date of Lithuania's Kironian Nord. But let's get down to some of the finer details of the project. As you might have guessed, this offshore wind farm will be offshore from Lithuania's coast. The official website says that it will be about 37 kilometers away from the nearest coast. The very, very basic map on the website shows that it's a little further to the north, like closer to Palanga rather than Klipera. But I doubt that this visualization is all that accurate. An Ignitus webpage does say that the wind farm will be roughly 50 kilometers away from the port of Klaipeda and cover about 120 square kilometers. Another webpage I found says that the wind farm will have up to 55 wind turbines with a maximum height of 350 meters. For reference, it's a little bit taller than the Vilnius TV tower, which itself stands 326 meters. And then finally, a July 2023 press release announcing the fact that Ignitus was awarded the tender notes that the bid price was 20 million euros. And then on the business side of things, the project appears to be a joint venture between two companies, Ignitus Renewables and Ocean Winds. As the winners of the tender, the joint venture will be granted an operation permit with the right to use the maritime area for 41 years. Ignitus Renewables has 51% ownership of Coronia Nord and the other 49% goes to Ocean Winds. And in case you didn't know, 74.99% of Ignitus Group shares are owned by the government of Lithuania. In terms of timeline, well, it's quite far from being a reality since the project is expected to be in operation around the year 2030. In 2024, the Kironia Nord team was hard at work developing environmental impact assessments and conducting geophysical and geotechnical surveys. As part of the survey work, it was announced in late November 2024 that an object was discovered on the seabed in the area designated for the wind farm. First thought to be a natural formation of moraine rock, a more accurate survey using a remotely operated underwater vehicle revealed that it was actually a shipwreck laying on the seabed. It's apparently a 70 meter long, 6 meter high ship sitting at a depth of about 38 meters underwater. Based on the welding of the hull, experts say that it could be as old as about 70 years, and the size and proportions of the ship are like the trawler type ships that were built in Lithuania and the other Baltic states since around the 1960s. Experts conclude that the shipwreck is not of significant historical value, and it will not be an obstacle for the development of the wind farm, so I guess it's staying where it is. Now when it comes to future timeline, 2025 will be the year that the project completes its environmental impact assessment. In 2026, construction permits will be obtained, and onshore construction will begin. In 2027, offshore construction will start, and this is expected to be completed as early as 2028, but it could go into 2029. And then in 2030, the project should be complete, and a power generation license should be granted. Obviously, anything coming from the official project website, or Ignitus, will be heavily biased. But it's interesting that they say that wind farms can actually help marine life. An Ignitus environmental expert says that offshore wind farms have minimal environmental impact, and, if planned appropriately, can even contribute to the enrichment of the local ecosystem. For example, the foundations of a wind turbine serve as artificial reefs where mollusks are happy to colonize such structures. And this in turn feeds fish and birds, and it filters the water. The other highlighted positive side effect is tourism. The Koronian Nord project says that its presence is expected to increase the number of tourism services in Klaipeda and coastal resorts. Using historical examples of wind farms in other countries, the turbines not only generate electricity, 
but they also become tourist attractions. Well, I guess I have to say, as a shareholder of Ignitus myself, I'm definitely hoping that they include a trip to the offshore wind farm once construction begins or once it's complete for like a shareholder day or something. Also on the note of being a shareholder, I do try not to be biased when reporting on any of this stuff. It does seem like a project that is mostly full of positive things, but of course, wind power isn't without its list of problems. Like any large machines, components on wind turbines can fail. Maintenance and repair is a challenge when you need to send a technician out to one of these turbines in the middle of the water in unpleasant weather. And as I've recently learned, electricity needs to be delivered at a precise frequency all the time. Something that is challenging, though not impossible, for wind farms and other renewables. With this in mind, Lithuania's electricity producers and operators will need to ensure the grid remains stable and balanced through various methods, such as the pumped storage hydroelectric power plant at Kronis. It's also worth mentioning that wind turbine blades only last between 20 to 25 years and have historically been a challenge to recycle, and they can be toxic if left to degrade in landfills. However, I believe this has changed a lot, and the blades are being recycled more and more these days. Interestingly, when I did some research on wind turbine blade recycling, I found that a researcher at Konis University of Technology's Faculty of Mechanical Engineering and Design, along with a team of researchers from the Lithuanian Energy Institute, completed a series of experiments to find a way to recycle wind turbine blades. Their research showed them that fibers, carbon, and fiberglass could be recovered and purified through an oxidation process, offering a sustainable filler material to enhance the mechanical properties of composite materials. So that's even more good news to address the negative impact of this form of electricity generation. I also suppose for some local residents, the presence of an offshore wind farm could be unpopular, and it may affect tourism and property values negatively, but I personally have my doubts about this. But finally, with such a relatively large project and a relatively small population in Lithuania, it appears that Koronia Nord is eagerly looking for people to hire. At the time I'm making this video, Open job positions include construction, government and legal project managers, a cable installation site manager, and a technical safety and environmental specialist. But of course, by the time you're watching this video, things could have changed. But on the topic of jobs, the sponsor of today's video is also looking for people to join their team. Sigli is on the hunt for talented IT and marketing experts to join their team, especially here in Lithuania. Sigli is a digital development services company with its office located in Vilnius. They're on the hunt for more people to work in sales and project management. And if you know another European language, that's even better. Check out sigli.com to learn more about their career opportunities. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.